There's a lighthouse on a hillside that overlooks life sea. Hello again, welcome to the channel. I'm Mike McDonald and we are here to try to answer uh, some Bible questions. Uh, the Bible question before us right now is actually part two of one that uh, we started earlier. And the question is, do people, and especially children, become angels at death? Well, the answer to that is no. Uh, the first part of that was, what happens to people at death? And we have answered that earlier. Now we are on the second part, and that would be, what are angels? So, uh, the word angel, angelos, means messenger. It is derived from the verb uh, angelo, which means I announce or I deliver a message. It can be used of anyone who is delivering a message from anyone. Uh, so it doesn't always have to refer uh, to a supernatural creature uh, created by God. Most of the time, however, it does refer in most of the time in scripture it does refer to a supernatural created being uh, whose chief attributes as a matter of fact are strength we see that in psalms uh, chapter 103 uh, verse 20 and another chief attribute is beauty we see that in ezekiel chapter 28 verses 12 through 17. Many details concerning angels have been a source of controversy uh, because most of them are assumed uh, and few of those controversies have been resolved. We know that their body seems to be uh, immaterial and they are spirit beings. Uh, Psalm 104 verse 4 and Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. From the name Lucifer, uh, which is the Hebrew noun Hillel, derived from the verb Halal, which means bright and shining, uh, it appears that their bodies are composed of light. Uh, light has content and could make up a definite body and one which could easily become visible or invisible. Some, have, some of these angels have been given the authority to appear visible in the form of human beings. And we have that throughout Scripture, from uh, examples from Genesis through Revelation. The word angelos in the Scripture always appears in the male gender. It never appears in the female gender. Only one gender among angels means that all angels were directly created by God. Scripture does not tell us when angels were created, but it does tell us that they were all present when God spoke the earth into existence. And it was such a beautiful sight that it astounded and all of these angels and they shouted for joy. Job chapter 38 verses 4 through 7. The Lord is telling Job uh, that he doesn't know nearly as much as he thinks he knows and this is what he says. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? To what were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstones when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? So God is asking Job, where were you when I spoke the earth into existence and it was so beautiful that all of the angels shouted for joy. So they were all created at one time 
they were all present uh, when the earth was spoken into existence and there have not been any more created. They, were, they are exceedingly numerous. We have uh, many uh, scriptures in reference to that. Psalm 68, verse 17, Job 25, verse 3, Matthew 26, verse 53, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22, Revelation chapter 5, verse 11. There are many others, but those will do. Their power is inconceivable. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35. Just like human souls, they were created eternal. They will never cease to exist. Some angels are actually super angels in beauty and strength as compared to other angels. They're all super as compared to humans, but some are actually uh, super compared to each other. These super angels are called cherubs. The plural of that is cherubim. So we see that this word does not describe a little white baby with wings. It describes the most beautiful and powerful creature ever created by God. Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer are all cherubim. Lucifer is described in terms that exceed any other biblical description of a creature. And that would be in Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 12 through 17. Lucifer is his name. His title, he has several titles. Uh, one of them is Satan. One of them is the devil. There is only one, the devil. Uh, another one is the prince of the power of the air. But his name is Lucifer. Besides other differences in angels, uh, the differences in looks, differences in position, in power, in authority, there are two major categories of angels. One category is the elect, and another category is the fallen. These two categories did not always exist prior to human history, but after God created the earth, remember Job 38, there was a conflict in heaven among the angels. They were all originally in a state of innocence, just like Adam was originally in a state of innocence. Then Lucifer sinned by exercising ne negative volition towards God, and when he did that, a portion of angelic creation, uh, one-third as a matter of fact, chose to go with Lucifer. Uh, Revelation 12 verse 4 says, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to earth. So a third of all angelic creation uh, rebelled against God uh, with Lucifer. Satan and his angels, now referred to as demons, remain opposed to God the elect angels, and believers on earth. They are in opposition to us. A portion of these fallen angels have received a temporary punishment of confinement. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, and Jude chapter 6, we learn a little about this, and this, this confinement is described as chains of darkness. So both of these verses uh, describing angels being bound and confined by darkness support the idea that angels are composed of light. So all angels were directly created by God before the earth was spoken into existence. No one or no thing becomes an angel ever. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, uh, please contact us at this channel. There's a lighthouse on a hillside that overlooks life's sea. And when I'm tossed
about It sends out a light 